Hey, what's up? Dave with Brazos Valley Strength. And today I wanted to make a really quick video on my top three favorite variations for soft touch bench press. So if you have any questions right off the bat about what soft touch bench press is, or if you should be doing a softer touch, I have a video on that on soft versus sink in the bench press. I'll put a link to that right here. So if you have questions, check that out first, and you can come back here and hopefully get some good programming tips. So I'll outline these three variations, and then at the end, I'll talk about what kind of programming strategies I tend to use for all of them. I think two of them will kind of fit into the same category. And then one I kind of approach a little bit differently a little bit more often. So the first one is the Spoto Press. This one is named after Eric Spoto. So if you check him out, he has an Instagram or I'm sure you can find stuff from him on YouTube. The man has the biggest arms you've ever seen. I think he's moved into more arm wrestling stuff kind of recently, but a humongous bench presser. And actually he tends to do more of a closer grip bench press, but a very soft touch. And most of his training, and, and from what I could see, almost all of his normal bench press training was done with the Spoto Press style, which is how it got its name. So what a Spoto Press is, is you go down, hopefully as close to your chest as you can come, without actually touching your chest. So... For people who do a soft touch bench press, this is a very, very good tool to help us fight for control down around the chest. But I think one of the main areas that people might actually offer some resistance to actually using this exercise is that you're not touching your chest and people really want to have that full range of motion for powerlifting, we have to touch our chest. But I think that most people who do a soft touch bench press don't really feel that there's a humongous difference in the effort, the range of motion that required between these two. And from what I can see with most people who I'm programming these for, the Spoto Press tends to match pretty, pretty closely to their normal competition bench. And if there's actually an increase as far as the load that they can use, it's pretty minimal. It's really not much. But the main benefit that they can actually get from this is having to fight as hard as they can around the chest to actually fight for that control. Most soft touch bench pressers, it, it's a night and day difference when they're actually able to control it and fight as much as they can and have that softest touch versus on some of those heavier weights when the bar gets too heavy for them to control as best as they would really want to and it sinks a little bit more. The Spoto Press really helps people learn to fight against that. So I tend to program these with a two count pause in my spreadsheets. It's always the, the default Spoto Press. It's a two count pause. From what I can see with Eric Spoto, he almost never paused these, that, that it was all more higher rep work, which I think you know could be a good way to approach this. But I'll talk about the programming that I use near the end of the video. But I tend to think that heavier reps with these tend to work very, very well for soft touch bencers because they really have to learn to fight against the barbell. On a similar note, the 420 tempo bench press is very, very high up there with variations that I think would really benefit soft touch benchers. The, the tempo, the 420, basically just means that it's gonna be a four count eccentric, then a two count pause on the chest, and then zero is just press as hard as you can on the way up. So the same idea is that we're learning to fight as hard as we can through the descent and then work for that pause on the bottom. The two count itself, I don't know that I have like a, a huge thought around, like a, the, the main work is going to be through that descent and lots of times the pause at the bottom kind of gets blended in feel with the rest of the rep. So if I'm being picky, that pause being longer is probably good. Most people struggle with, with soft touch with those longer pauses. So I think that this can be a really, really good option to include in people's training to get used to having to hold the bar for a long time and to work through kind of extended amounts of, of reps here and re amount of effort overall. But I do think that the programming with this one, we do have to acknowledge the overall fatigue that's associated with these. And I don't necessarily mean like the fatigue from session to session, but it is generally pretty difficult to match that output from subsequent reps. So higher rep sets on this one are usually not a very good idea unless we're going for just a straight up kind of feel. If we're, if we're trying to teach a newer lifter how to approach the bench press, Maybe doing higher rep sets 
five plus reps could be a positive thing, but for most people, they're not going to be able to repeat a high amount of weight for more than two, three reps. So a lot of times keeping these in the lower rep ranges, kind of regardless of, uh, of how many sets you're doing, tends to be a little bit better. But again, I'll touch on more specifics than that at the end of the video. The last one here is going to be feet up bench press. So I tend to call this one feet up bench press. A lot of people call it Larson's press. I do also have a video on feet up bench press and, and hopefully trying to have a conversation around feet up and Larson's. I know that some coaches divide those two, that they would consider the feet up bench press and the Larson's press different things. I don't really consider them that. And I actually encourage people to do feet up bench press in a different style than what uh, I, I think a lot of coaches do. So I do also have a video on that. I'll put that video right here as well. But the feet up bench press or the Larson's press was named after Adrian Larson. So Adrian was born with some genetic issues in his legs, uh, had disabilities, and so was unable to actually train his legs and to get strong and to use leg drive in the first place. So as he moved more into to hopefully trying to have other sports that he could do, but specifically weight training, bench press was kind of the only thing that he could really pursue and really put a lot of work into it. So the Larson's press is named after him and his disability, but the man was a super, super good bench presser. Uh, so I'll put some clips up of him here, but why I use this one and why I think that it's a good variation for soft touch bench pressers is because it removes the leg drive. So this one can carry over for both soft touch and for more of a sinking touch. But for soft touch bench pressers, I think it's a really, really good idea for them to learn to fight with their upper body and not totally rely on just the leg drive, right? I have videos on leg drive and leg drive is mostly going to be there to maintain the arch and to create that strong, stable position. But involving the upper body to really drive the rib cage to the bar and to work as hard as you can and to bring more intent from the upper body and not only the legs in those positions is also an excellent tool. So as far as programming with these three lifts, I tend to think the first two are strongly, strongly suited for much lower rep ranges and higher loads. So particularly with the Spoto Press, this is one that I, I use very, very often in sets of three and below. Kind of the same as I mentioned already with the Tempo Bench Press, is it's kind of hard to maintain that output, but not quite as bad with the Spoto. But overall, variations that bring out kind of the best version of our lift. In this case, a very, very soft touch. In the Spoto Press, we're trying to bring it as close to our t-shirt as we can. Sometimes touching the t-shirt but not the chest is a good cue. So if we're trying to work as hard as we can and understanding that the actual effort, the, the effort involved in maintaining that tension down around the bottom is kind of the critical thing. Like it's the main thing that we're going after by using this variation higher reps that end up just kind of fatiguing us throughout the whole set probably don't really accomplish that in the way that heavy weights need to. So for us to get good carryover with the Spoto Press, I think it's probably a pretty good idea to use this in the place of singles or in lower rep sets. And it tends to bring out very, very good versions of people's bench press. For the tempo bench press, I think my, maybe my only difference as far as programming is I personally don't like multiple reps kind of at all with the tempo bench press at this point. Um, I do think that there's still utility in, in doing doubles and triples with it at times, but this is one of those that I tend to do what I call either one, one or one, two reps, where the first rep of a set is the variation. So in this case, we're doing that four, two, zero bench press, but the subsequent reps, the remaining reps within that set are competition reps. And I think this is a great, great way for us to blend the effort that we get from the tempo bench press into the rest of our competition reps. So if I'm doing a one, one double, what that would look like is that I'm doing my first rep with a tempo, a four, two, zero tempo. And then on my second rep of the set, the last rep of the set, I'm trying to match that effort. I'm trying to fight for that descent. I'm trying to learn to work really, really hard around my chest. So that I'm prepared for that effort when it actually comes to my competition reps because most of the time when it gets really heavy, it's 100% of your one rep max. It's easy for people with that soft touch to lose just a little bit of that tension and the bar sinks a little bit more than they want to. And then a lot of lift falls apart. 
where if they were ready to do a little bit more work down at the bottom, usually they can overcome those. So the final one would be the feet up bench press. And this one I think is still very well suited for the higher loads, even some of the lower rep ranges. I like to do singles with them. I think it's still a good strategy. There's a little bit more range of motion, obviously having to fight really hard through the whole rep is still present. But this one tends to be a little bit more accessible for some of those higher rep sets. And oftentimes, this is a really good tool to use on days that lifters may already be fatigued and, and sore from other training. So if somebody is, is sore and tired from squatting or deadlifting the day previously, and maybe their back is sore, their legs are sore, and we just know in general, they're not going to be able to get into the most ideal setup that they possibly can. A feet up bench press is a really good tool in that moment because it still brings out all of the effort that they need from their upper body, learning to fight through the descent and maintain those positions. But sometimes it's a little bit more accessible and gives people that ability to work really hard in a way that they may not really be able to match under normal circumstances if they were trying to arch and maintain leg drive in a situation where their readiness is maybe a little bit lower. So the feet up bench press I think can really span all the way across rep ranges and doing higher rep sets, even more of a hypertrophy style with those, I think is totally accessible. But the feet up bench press tends to be a little bit more versatile than the other ones, but at the same time may not have quite the amount of return with the, the top end strength as the first two might. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you do have programming questions or other variations that you like, maybe drop me a comment. We can have a conversation about those things. I'm planning on doing the same thing for more sinking touch bench presses and then sumo conventional. I'll make little videos on all of those. So if you did like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.